This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is an upgrade for the Fnatic V3 pedals. This upgrade comes directly from Fnatic, and it goes by the name Club Sport Pedal V3 Brake Performance Kit. This performance kit allows you to tune the V3 pedals to the exact feeling that you want, the exact amount of strength, and the exact amount of travel. The performance kit goes for about 30 bucks and comes with a variety of different elastomer bumpers to replace the soft cushion foam inside of the stock pedals. By mixing and matching the combination of bumpers, you can create different tensions and different progressive feelings and change the amount of travel offered from the pedals. This kit requires that you install it yourself, but it will work with either the regular V3 or the V3 inverted pedals. The kit includes a set of green elastomer bumpers and then a set of red ones that are slightly softer. Each set or color has two thicker 13 mm by 20 mm pieces and a thinner one at 12 mm by 20 mm. It also includes a small softer polyurethane foam piece that measures in at 13.5 by 15 mm. In addition, there's a bottle of lithium grease and an instruction manual. So let's talk about what the performance kit actually does or how it actually works. Now the stock pedals, both the V3 and the inverted, they come with very soft polyurethane bumpers or springs, whatever you want to call them. These bumpers squish relatively easy and because of that offer a light resistance and a fair amount of travel. With the tension dial on the brake pedal of the Club Sport pedals, I can make this firmer and limit the travel a little bit but the performance kit takes that concept to a new level. The performance kit comes with a series of stiffer or firmer elastomer bumpers. They also come in different thicknesses and by changing the combinations we can change the overall feeling in the pedal including giving it a dual rate resistance. What do I mean by that? Use water as an example. Water takes the path of least resistance and so do dual rate springs or shocks. When we compare and take different combinations, we're gonna make one squish before the other, the path of least resistance. As a terrible example, I could use this very soft spring compared to the ones that come in the kit and this spring, just a very basic simple spring. And when I put them together, obviously, it's going to compress the soft spring before it even starts to move. It's going to use that as a surface. Now that's a bad example, but using two different combinations, it's always going to take the path of least resistance before the path of hard resistance. Or in our case, giving us a dual rate spring. So when we take this logic and turn back to the performance kit, it offers us eight different combinations of elastomer bumpers when changing the combinations of density or thicknesses. The small polyurethane spring can be used as a third compound and it actually turns this into 16 combinations. Now as a result of using stiffer or less compressible bumpers, it's also going to in return reduce the amount of travel in our brake pedal. They just go hand in hand. So let's talk about the installation of these bumpers, which was a little bit difficult, and then talk about the actual difference we feel on the pedal. Step 1. Remove any preload from the pedal by turning the resistance dial down to 1 on the cylinder. Step 2. Loosen the small 2.5mm Allen bolt from the brake cylinder where it joins the pedal arm and then remove the lockdown bar that holds it to the arm. Step 3. Disconnect the plug for the brake from the main board and then pull the cylinder from the pedal arm. Step 4. Pull the pedal bolt out from the brake cylinder. Step 5. Remove the stock polyurethane springs from the cylinder. Step 6. If using the polyurethane spring, do not use the grease on that spring. Insert this spring first if using it. Step 7. Use the lithium grease to coat the elastomer springs that will be used. Step 8. Insert the desired springs into the cylinder. Step 9. Insert the brake bolt back into the cylinder. Step 10. Slide the brake back into position. Step 11. Insert the joining bolt back into the pedal arm and tighten down the 2.5mm screw. Step 12. 
adjust the preload screw to remove any play and then tighten down further if looking for a stiffer setting with less travel. Step 13. Plug the brake wire back into the board if it was removed. Step 14. Recalibrate your pedals in the Fanatic menu. Step 15. Recalibrate your pedals in your favorite sim. Step 16. Drive them. As I mentioned in the steps, after making a change, you will have to recalibrate your pedals in your favorite sim. And the reason for that being is we're actually changing the amount of travel in the pedal. So things are different. And just to give you an idea of how much we have changed the travel or range of the pedal, the stock pedal moved between two and three inches depending on the dial settings. However, with the stiffest performance kit mod installed, we have limited the travel to about one inch and a whole lot stiffer. Now, when it came to driving, the feel in the pedal is completely different. What was a little soft and had excessive travel is now very stiff or firm and has a limited travel that much more replicates a race car brake versus a street car brake. The smoothness, the overall operation of the pedal is unchanged. This only changed the amount of pressure needed to move the pedal. With the stiffer pedal, I find it easier to find the threshold breaking point. And with the stiffer pedal, it works as a preventable method of over braking. You can press the pedal hard and then continue to push or slightly let off at lockup with much more ease and precision. I started off with the heaviest combination of bumpers to feel the biggest difference, and I would say that it doubled the amount of pressure required to press the brakes. It also limited the travel the most, and again, really changed the feel of the pedal. It took what felt like a streetcar brake pedal and gave it the F1 brake overhaul. The other option, which creates a medium strength pedal, was going with a two-stage combination of hard and soft bumpers. In theory, this causes a dual rate spring with the softer spring compressing first and then the second compressing after. However, I do have to admit, this progressive part is a little hard to feel with the foot, but it did give me a softer pedal with more travel than when using only the hard bumpers. Or in general, you can call it a medium strength pedal with a medium level travel. So after trying out different combinations, I found that you can really change the pedals to match what car in real life you are trying to mimic. If you are a fan of streetcar brake, well then out of the box, the Fanatic pedals are great, but they are not capable of that super strong stiff pedal feel. But with this mod, they do. So for me, it's a no brainer. For 30 bucks, if you want a stiffer pedal, mission accomplished. But if you have a set of V3 pedals and you're happy with their performance, then why fix what ain't broke? But for 30 bucks, I'm a little blown away by the amount of change it can make and what the pedals feel like. Well done, Fanatic. So I think I've told you everything you need to know about this upgrade or performance kit for the V3 pedals. If I didn't answer your question, if there's anything you want to know, I beg you, please email me at sean at thesimpit.com and I'll do my best to answer your questions. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.